spring and summer, you might be able to pick fresh roses out of your garden to place on your altar. They're all dried up and dead this time of year. Winter brings its own treasures. Today, I will share with you some of the traditions of Yule. Cold lace spirals onto glass panes. Outside, the shivering winds blow, howling for a friend to play beneath the falling snow, to build a man and pretend. It's known as the witch's Christmas. The winter solstice is the shortest day of the year, the darkest time when you might wanna remember loved ones who have passed on, old habits that you wanna release, but it is also a time to look for abundance. Money spells, manifestations, Manifestation for Healing course coming in 2023. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. Ancient traditions now thought to be wellness practices to prevent SAD, otherwise known as Seasonal Affective Disorder. So maybe in the spring and summer, you might be able to pick fresh roses out of your garden to place on your altar. They're all dried up and dead this time of year. There's still so much that you can use. A couple examples that I've placed on my altar, this beautiful piece of wood. Stay to the end to get your Yule altar checklist completely for free. I love collecting sticks. Anytime we go to a new park especially, you will see me walking around and seeing what type of new sticks that I can gather up. This is one thing that witches do a lot. We store. <laughs> We're like squirrels or chipmunks putting away nuts for winter. It takes a lot of energy to do spell work. If you had to find or create a spell, gather all the materials, and perform the spell in one day, you're gonna be pretty exhausted. Usually we gather items throughout the year that we know are things we like to use in our personal practices. One thing that I use a lot are sticks. To connect with nature. Depending what type of stick it is, where I found it, it will also have an energy. The driftwood is something I love to pick up and it helps me to connect to the water element, which could help with things like relaxation, connecting to your emotions, and things like that. This wood I collected from a forest, so this is gonna help me connect to the earth element. I also have a beautiful pine cone stick here, and I'm gonna be very gentle with it. A couple of them are barely hanging on there. And when I found these, my face lit up like a kid on Christmas morning opening up her presents. Use them for protection and abundance. Some people use them for transformation. And I would also even say you could use them for communication with the spirit world as well. Candles. This time of year, you will see gold and silver used ornaments on the tree, like tinsel. You will see candles lit a lot, which they have the gold flame fire. It represents the calling back of the sun. The sun had gone away. We want to call it back. It's the darker time of year. That's the day that you want to take out your candles and light it up. It is a time of year where people can experience SAD. I need to be outside. I need my nature time. And this time of year, whenever it's freezing cold outside and it gets dark really early, it is hard for me to get as much outdoor time as I need. We all need sun. Whenever you are lacking in something like that, that you usually would be receiving outside, you're gonna feel some effects from it. Lighting up as many candles as you are, you're creating your own little sun inside your house. That's the best way for me to explain it. And it's the same thing with these bright, shiny ornaments and the lights on the tree. You are creating this light. You're bringing the light back. This is a time when the Oak King and the Holly King trade places in the Wiccan religion. If you go back to Greek mythology, the story of Persephone and Hades also plays in at this time of year. She comes out in Maybon in spring. In fall, she goes to the underworld. This would also be a good time if you do pray to any type of underworld deities, this is a good time to pray to them and ask for their help. Whatever higher power you believe in, you can always ask for help. Being a practitioner of witchcraft, identifying as pagan. This one is a very pagan inspired type of altar. Do I still celebrate Christmas? Yes, I do. I celebrated Christmas as a child and I have children now and they love Christmas. 
call this the Christmas tree. Whatever like live pieces I get, I will generally call my Yule tree. I know some people will call their artificial tree their Yule tree and that's fine, whatever makes you happy. I will typically do a Christmas tree and a Yule tree because that's something that I enjoy doing and my kids do too. My son had his own Yule tree in his bedroom last year and I thought it was adorable and he was responsible for watering it and taking care of it. We still do presents, we still do Santa, we do all that good stuff. I celebrate Yule with my family too. They're starting to learn some of the traditions of Yule. I didn't grow up in a pagan family. I didn't really grow up in a heavily Christian family either, but I grew up in a typical American family where, you know, we went to church once in a while, we celebrated Christmas. Last year was the first year that we had a large celebration for Yule in my family. We did it all up. We had the Yule tree, we had the Yule log cake. I didn't get a chance to make a wooden Yule log and set it on fire as per tradition. I purchased a log shaped chocolate cake and it was delicious and my kids loved it. We pulled out plates and our nice teacup. We had special drinks and then something I wanted to do with my family was to talk about something that they were grateful for. I'm gonna share a few of those with you in case you're getting the wintertime blues. It's a few things that you can think about that maybe you enjoy too, or you can let me know what you like about wintertime in the comments below. I love a good bonfire, even just outdoor heater. <laughs> I love being outside in the cold and feeling the warmth on my hands, but there's nothing like a real fire. Even when I can't be outside with a fire, I will often just sit around my little candles and I call them my little mini bonfires. We're generally wishing for warmer weather this time of year but if it was warm out we wouldn't have a fire burning because it would be too hot some of you may have fireplaces that you enjoy sitting around I don't have one now but as a child I loved sitting around the fireplace with my mom she loved her fireplace too I love going outside and getting like freezing cold and then coming in and getting all warm and cozy getting under a blanket or taking a hot shower or hot bath and again, those are things that I wouldn't be doing if I came out and it was warm outside. I'd probably be coming in to crank the air conditioning. When I can really feel that contrast, of going from the cold to the warm, it really helps you to see what you have to be grateful for. You can find things like wood and pine cones outside. You can find big pine boughs as well that you can make wreaths out of or just a centerpiece. These are things that you can look around and just see that they are still abundant in this dark, dead time of year when things are dying and barely hanging on. You can still find abundance. They're great to bring in for your altar because it reminds you of that. It reminds you of the abundance that is already in your life and the abundance that you can go out and grab. Big fan of the Fey Realm, as many of you may know. If you have watched my How to Make a Fairy House video, it probably should be called a love letter to the Fey Realm because I love the Fey. I feel like there are different types of Fey spirits. You're definitely going to have your ones that you're going to interact with more in the summer and spring. You're going to have more for the fall and then you're going to have your winter ones. I see so many cute gnomes out this time of year and I feel like it really is depictive of the type of Fey spirit that are around this time of year. You're going to be looking for like your woodland Fey your gnomes and your elves and things like that. I mean, you see Elf on the Shelf, how popular that's getting. We have yet to start that tradition here, kind of have in my head when my son, who is very curious, asks about it. But it's how it's elf magic, and I think he'll be okay with that answer. Shadow work. You know I'm a fan of shadow work. I love a good shadow work practice because the deeper you dig and you clear out the old, the more you make room for new. If you have a pot full of coal and someone brings you gold and they're just dumping it on top of the coal, you might get one or two pieces of gold and the rest is going to fall on the ground. You've got to flip that pot upside down and dump that coal out, clean it out, and then you can fill it up with something amazing. Winter is a great time for shadow work. You might be stuck in your house, you might have extra time on your hands in the evening. Sit down and work on a shadow work practice. I have been using my past life oracle cards lately. This is my new little early Yule or Christmas present to myself, self love here. It's gonna help you dig deep. If you're going past life, you're going even deeper than like childhood trauma. You're going to generational trauma. You're going to past life trauma. You also might get some inspiration from the past lives that you have lived as well. Shadow work cards, fairy oracle cards. Still gonna pick up my light worker cards whenever I feel the need to. 
but I really kind of dive in more to the earth and nature realms in this time of year. Whereas in the summer, I might work more with the angelic and divine realms. Christmas books and Christmas songs. We still do those here as well. I have got a couple books about Yule and pagan holidays that I have started doing with my family. If you are pagan and you wanna start sharing these traditions with your children and other family members as well, I recommend getting some type of books that you guys can kind of look through together so it's not just like mom preaching to you. I took them to an ice cream shop to get like some seasonal, I got like peppermint bark ice cream and they got like chocolate or something. And we sat around and we did like an ice cream and story time and we did some pagan yule stories i had poems christmas stories and it was just a fun time interested in doing practices that relate to the fey realm they're great practices that you can do with your children and that they will enjoy right now we have a little fairy village around our tree out front to welcome any fey there Keep it cleaned like you would any altar, like some little gnomes, bench, and little tiny trees, and a little door, and it's super cute. So when I'm out front with my kids, it gives us something to do as well. It gives them something to do. They can clean up the little fairy village and set it up, and we'll talk about the fae and what they mean to me. And it is a good time to celebrate any types of forest animals, horned animals very big in the pagan community this time of year. You might see things with horns. I have sticks that actually look like horns in my curio cabinet that I made last winter, and I love it so much that I ended up keeping it there. I'm looking to add some more pieces to my collection of things to celebrate the animals, but for now, sticks work just fine to me. It's a depiction. You could have a wooden carved deer. You could have a, a ceramic goat or whatever type of animal you enjoy, a horse. It doesn't have to actually be actual real horns or bones or anything like that if you don't want to. You could do as simple as printing out a picture that you like or buying a piece of artwork and displaying it at your altar. Certain colors that correspond with this type of time of year, which we touched on when we talked about the lights and the sun. Solar energy that we want to welcome back. Silver, yellow, gold, all great for that. And then those bobble type of shape. You're gonna see the ornament stars. You will see people, you know, with the star on top of the tree. That also helps to signify solar and celestial energy that we're calling forth. Other colors that are big this time of year, as you might imagine, is red and green. Things such as holly berries, you might see berries on the mistletoe, lots of green. A green candle helps you to connect to earth, nature, money. Who doesn't want some extra money? Green is a great color for money spells, whether it's the candle or the altar cloth, some jewelry that you may have, a crystal. Green is gonna be great to connect that money element. It's also very grounding, which I find money to kind of lean into that grounded element as well. Something we use in the 3D world to make purchases. I will use green candles to help ground my energy if I feel that it's a little bit chaotic. I will use it as well to focus my energy for manifestation spells to manifest more wealth and abundance into my life. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on our manifestation workshop coming up soon. Red, green, gold, yellow, silver, very common for this time of year. Don't worry if you don't have a pen and pencil to write this down because there's a winter altar checklist that is going to be in the description box below. So get done watching the video, download your free checklist. Even though it can be chilly out this time of year, still love going for a walk. And that was one of the free things that we could do whenever we wanted to entertain ourselves because of my draw to be out in nature as a sensitive or an intuitive. I feel a call to be outside to ground myself when I start to feel nervous or a little bit of chaotic energy, I like to just go on outside and ground that energy right back down. I will still go out and take a nice walk even though it's cold out. Got my not ugly sweater, my fresh pine right here that you can see on my reef. And I'm gonna go ahead outside and take a nice walk. If you'd like to join me, see how my fairy village is doing today. Welcoming the fairy here. I also have some beautiful moss here that I wanna check on. I'm a big fan of mushrooms and moss when I'm out walking. I love to get down, just pet them. So soft and it's just so grounding for me. One time I actually incurred an injury from hugging a tree too hard. Oh, scratch on my chin. And I'm like, oh my God, look at my chin. I have a tree hugging accident. I promise I wasn't kissing it. This is one of my beautiful trees we have out front. Look at all those roots. And I'll get down low and I will just touch it and really get my energy grounded back into the earth. I love you all.